नमस्कार दिस इज अखिलेश पार्गर वेलकम टू टेलबिट्स ऑन बिजनेस एंड फाइनेंस विद मी इट वाज इन जुलाई दिस ईयर दैट सेबी लेवीड अ पेनल्टी ऑफ 5 करोड़ रुपीस ऑन चित्रा रामकृष्णा द फॉर्मर मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर सीईओ ऑफ द एनएससी फॉर हर डूबियस रोल इन द मैसिव कोलोकेशन स्कैम एंड मिस गवर्नेंस एंड ट्रेडिंग इरेगुलरिटीज एट द एनएससी व्हिच टुक प्लेस ड्यूरिंग हर टेन्योर she be rejected her plea that she was unaware of the collocation scam that she had relied upon the information advice and judgment of the senior functional heads of the nse who reported to her and that it was their skill competence and integrity that she trusted and therefore she said that she was not to blame she be held that chitra and not anyone else had the responsibility for all decisions taken by the departments reporting to her it held that being the managing director and ceo of the nse she cannot absolve herself of the liability arising out of the malpractices fraudulent activities and lacunae pertaining to such sensitive matters which took place at the nse under her leadership it said that she was the managing director of the nse with complete control over its affairs and thus has to be responsible for all acts committed in the organization and that as the ceo she had a much higher responsibility and liability as compared to others so be held that she was bound to administer the nsc with professional competence fairness impartiality and transparency and is thus personally responsible for the violations committed by the nsc SEBI may have passed its order penalizing Chitra but investigation prosecution in the case is far from being over as other agencies like the income tax department CBI and the enforcement directorate too are investigating issues relevant to them under their jurisdictions resultantly the NSC scam has been getting more and more murkier with each passing day as more and more violations are being unearthed by the investigating agencies it all gained pace after chitra's shocking confession to sebi that as the managing director and ceo of the nse she took key decisions under the directions of an unknown swami who she had never met ironically significant strategic decisions of the nse which is india's biggest stock exchange with a market cap of worth of worth 3 trillion dollars were being taken by chitra on the orders of an incognito swami who she had never met and she shared the most sensitive and confidential information about the nse with him it is actually believed that this secret swami who was directing her counseling her and had even invited her for a holiday at seychelles was her own deputy anand subramaniam who very unsurprisingly was also the biggest beneficiary of all key decisions that chitra took allegedly at the behest of that shady swami as the shocking crimes spilled out in this case apart from investigation by sebi it was the cbi and the ed who got into action in the matter the laptop and the emails that could have led the agencies to the so called swami of chitra had been destroyed apparently at chitra's instructions she was thus taken into custody by the cbi and then by the ed for a deeper investigation into the case the investigation into the colo scam soon led to the unearthing of money laundering offenses by her as also the crime of tapping of phones of top nsc officers and others it also led to the arrest of the former mumbai police commissioner sanjay pande whose company icec had been awarded a lucrative contract by chitra in order to tap phones incidentally chitra too continues to be lodged in tihar jail at present so does sanjay pande the enforcement directorate arrested her in july in the alleged phone tapping case while the cbi which is also investigating her cases had earlier arrested and interrogated chitra in the colo scam case the latest news coming from the ongoing investigation now is that chitra 
and her accomplices were also involved in insider trading, resulting in huge illicit gains to her. It has led to the arrest of Ravi Narayan to her former boss at the NSE. The press reports say that the Eris charge sheet in the NSE illegal phone tapping case points to insider trading during the tenure of Chitra Ramakrishna and Ravi Narayan when they were the CEO and managing director of the NSE. The Enforcement Directorate, while processing transcripts of the phone calls which were tapped during her tenure, during their ongoing now money laundering probe, the ED has reportedly come across possible instances of price sensitive information being leaked in order to gain undue advantage. In other words, price sensitive information was leaked and insider trading did take place. The ED says that some of this evidence is indicative of insider trading by certain entities which would require a detailed probe by SEBI, which is a regulator in this matter. The ED alleges that Chitta Ramakrishna and Ravi Narayan had assisted ISEC Securities, the Sanjay Pandey company, in order to generate illegal gains of 24 crore rupees, which are linked to insider trading, according to it. Of course, it has got a queue. The detailed investigation has to take place by SEBI as far as charges of insider trading are concerned. This saga of shocking financial and other crimes committed with the involvement of Chitra, whether it be the polo scam, whether it be the phone tapping and snooping, the money laundering, the insider trading, sharing confidential information of NSE with a secret supposed Swami, violations of corporate governance and potentially other unknown crimes not known at present, to us are of an era and they coincide with similar blatant misconduct and malpractices by many others in the banking and financial domain, including Ravi Parthasarathy of ILFS, Rana Kapoor of Yes Bank, Chanda Kocher of ICICI Bank, the Vadwans of DHFL, Anil Ambani at Reliance Capital, and also by the top executives of public sector banks, ultimately leading to the bankruptcy of 14 out of 21 public sector banks because of this kind of mismanagement and malpractices that took place by the CEOs, by the top executives. The fraudulent activity that such institutions in the same era led to the collapse of ILFS, collapse of Yes Bank, DHFL, Reliance Capital, Shre Finance, etc. It was an entire tribe of fraud delinquent CEOs, as we call, in India's banking and financial system. If Chanda Kocher took bribes and manipulated the financial statements of a bank, then so did Ravi Parthasarathy at ILFS, so did Rana Kapoor at Yes Bank, the Vadwans too did the same thing at DHFL, and so did the top PSB bankers, which led to their downfall, which led to the bankruptcy of 14 public sector banks, as we mentioned. It was a time when this tribe of powerful rogue CEOs at India's banking and financial system had a free run and they ran amok. They committed a litany of atrocious financial and corporate crimes under the watch and involvement of many others, without which it would not have been possible to commit such mega crimes and that too for so long and on so many fronts. Such serious crimes, even if committed by the top CEOs, cannot be the handiwork of just one single person acting in isolation. It invariably involves many players in this dubious game, some actively involved and the others being passive accomplices. When these huge organizations with extensive rules and regulations, strong processes, robust internal control and reporting systems, and fully digitized and computerized sophisticated operations were being actively managed by these fraud CEOs, it is not possible that their misconduct and malpractices were not known to the likes of internal auditors, the statutory auditors, the vigilance executives of the organization, independent directors of the company, non-independent directors, secretarial auditors, and other top executives of these organizations. To us, the inevitable probability is that they were very much aware of the crime being committed by these delicate CEOs like Ravi Parthasati, Rana Kapoor, Chitra, Ram Krishna, etc. But they chose to be accomplices, whether active or passive. And it is very clear 
that they all benefited from them. The common uniform features of these corporate crimes and criminals and all the misconduct that they did were quite a few. And which were those? These common features start from whether it be Ravi Parthasarathy of ILFS, Chanda Kocher of ICIC, etc. All these dubious characters dominated and controlled their organizations and their auditors, etc. with an iron hand, with the likes of Parthasarathy even known to be victimizing any detractors with false court cases, etc. So they were powerful, domineering CEOs of their respective organizations. The second common feature, the auditors and directors of these companies were paid huge fees as we saw in the case of ILFS and its auditor Deloitte, apparently in order to buy their silence. The third, it is for this reason that these shady CEOs had accomplices all around which helped them to conceal their crimes and gave them a free run for many years. That was another common feature. The fourth one, with such solid teamwork, they committed financial and corporate crimes across the board, leaving no possibility untouched, as in the alarming instance of phone tapping at the NSE at the behest of Chita Ram Krishna and Rana Kapoor indulging in funding of the underworld at Yes Bank. Thus, their crimes extended beyond financial crimes and it was in any possible domain. The crimes were thus just not a one-off case and they were certainly very serious. The next common feature, all that could be violated or contravened was contravened and violated by these corporate characters with absolute impunity. Further, they had big and famous names by way of directors and auditors to provide a sheen of false credibility to their operations in order to hide their murky deeds. And to top it all, the respective regulator also, according to us, was negligent, if not complicit, giving an easy going to them for many years together. But to us, the most important player in all these big ticket corporate crimes still remains unknown. Despite the intense investigation by many agencies, in many cases, now for many years. And that unknown player is to us the godfather of all these delinquents who must have sat at the top in Delhi, facilitating and protecting their misdeeds. And of course, he certainly would have benefited immensely out of this patronage given to these kind of delinquencies. That to us is the main criminal. And interestingly, that criminal or that delinquent remains elusive and incognito even now. Let's see whether the investigation trail will ever lead to this godfather, who we would presume was a man at the top sitting in Delhi. But of course, we don't know who it is. This is Akhile Bhargav signing off till we meet again. Namaskar. Now be the first to know about the latest updates on our new news app. Go on your Android or iOS, search for HW News Network. Download our app, choose the language you prefer to get updates in and be up to date with the latest news.